My name is Nicholas Galanet. I'm Tlingit and Aleut. So um, that's where my family comes from. Well, I grew up in Sitka, Alaska. Um, that's, again, the Tlingit side of my family is from Yakutat further north. I grew up around art. My father is an artist. My uncle is an artist. That was probably my first major uh, influence into the arts. So I started working with them in their studios. I love, I love having fun creating and creating dialogue and conversation. So that's what a lot of this work is, I suppose. Uh, White Carver, that's a really fun piece. Uh, so it's an installation uh, and it was first installed, it's a performance installation. It was first installed in Vancouver where I had a, a solo exhibition. Uh, there's so many layers to this piece, like there really is. When I was learning how to carve and create, I was working at a cultural center, and, and the cultural center is where native artists um, create. It's a nice venue, but it's like a bit of a zoo, I suppose. And we'd sit in our desks, our benches, our studios, and visitors would come through and watch. And it's meant to be educational, but it's also, um, I don't know, it, it lacks that, I think, when it takes that format. And this is a play on that. So it's a, um, just the idea of ethnicity and, and, then, and then a craft or a piece of work that follows. So white carver is um, essentially native carver, I suppose. Just flipped a little bit, but there's more. Um, in the indigenous art world, there's a lot of politics surrounding identity of um, down to who's created the work and what, what justifies a object be um, what goes into the work that justifies it being native made, I suppose. And there's different definitions, even down to the State Arts Council, or, or, or down to uh, the Silver Hand Program in Alaska, which is set up to help visitors identify which pieces are not Indonesian made or knockoff, and then which ones are native made. Anyways, so there's this whole reactionary subculture subculture to native art um, and a lot of it is taking icon iconography or iconic imagery um, the aesthetic of our cultural work uh, and stripping away everything else from it so it becomes a shell or a ghost uh, and that's um, this is sort of a play on that as well so a lot of these carvers that aren't from the community get attracted by the power of the visual aspect of the art form. So they come and they create the work, but they create it outside of its original context. Um, that's what's happening in this piece. Uh, white carvers recreating a contemporary native carved object, which is um, the I Love Your Culture wood piece that's outside of it in a display case. So that's his like inspiration. That's his form of native art that he has to, that he wants to achieve. To, um, but that piece that he's carving is a pocket pussy, which is like, um, it's, an, it's, it's the same idea of taking something that you love or you like or you would like to have, but not taking all of it. So in that sense, it's a, I don't know, sex toy. You don't have the woman, you just have the <laughs> masturbation tool, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I think it's funny. It cracks me up, but uh, and that's what happens when you when people take for, for the visual aspect of cultural art, they're leaving behind uh, actively even um, leaving behind issues with the history, the land, land right, the indigenous rights. All of these things that are real and relevant get pushed back. Cult cultural amnesia, and they just we just say no. Let's just take what we like about it and move on. So. That's kind of what the dialogue's happening in that whole scenario, so, yeah. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about There's No Eye. Um, <clears throat> so that was a photo series, our part of a work in that shot, was actually sh shot with a good friend of mine, Inua, who does wonderful work, and we went and did this piece. Basically, it's this idea that there's no eye in Indian, and, and um, um, what I mean by that is, culture can be so generalized and, and so romanticized and um, that you lose any form of individuality and in, and especially in the arts side of things so that's kind of a play on that and then the irony of it is that uh, my image is the eye in there so um, yeah it goes a little further into that I suppose but yeah so how we identify with with uh, 
that side of things as well. So, uh, Tsu Shugak Titan is the title of that work. Uh, it's a two-part series. Um, the translation of that is, we will again open this container of wisdom that's been left in our care. To me, that's the philosophy um, of that series. And basically, the container of wisdom, culturally speaking, is uh, our language, our dance, our visual art, um, our trajectory creatively, all of those things. So, uh, and this is doing so, I suppose. It's people, people assume one thing when they see each of the videos and when they discover the audio, they get, they get a, uh, a little surprise, I guess. Everybody and anyone, I mean, it's for the world. It's not, it's not really for them. The, the work um, finds the people it needs to find and, and that's what it's there for. So to create and, co and cause uh, discussion and dialogue and progress ultimately, so yeah.